Today, I'm issuing a stay-at-home order for the entire state of Louisiana. This, this astounding and unprecedented story continues to evolve. I think you set the gauges that this is a really serious problem that we have to take seriously. I mean, people always say, well... Welcome in, everyone, to the Louisiana Now podcast. I am your host, Todd Rossnagel. It is great to have you along with us. This is our last episode of 2020. And in today's episode... We're going to look back at the events of 2020. Now, when we initially sat down to document and record everything that took place over this past year, it was, to be honest with you, exhausting. There was just so much that happened. From coronavirus to racial unrest to the single most active hurricane season in Louisiana, we do not need to tell you just how intense 2020 was. Our emotions and our patience at times stretched to their limits. But we hope listening to this compressed timeline will give you an idea of just how much we went through in 2020. It's important to note, we are acutely aware, that much of what we will highlight in this episode we are not through with. The pandemic is still raging, racial unrest has not gone away, and the recovery in southwest Louisiana is still needed. So, without further ado, and perhaps with some trepidation, let's go back in time to January of 2020. The year 2020 started with anticipation for the denomination. It was to be a year of potential change for the United Methodist Church, but just as we were looking toward all that 2020 had in store for us, 2020 would flip the script in ways none of us were prepared for. Just 20 days into 2020, we received news of the first confirmed case of coronavirus in the United States, a Washington state resident who had recently returned from China. 10 days later, the World Health Organization issues a global health emergency as cases jumped to nearly 10,000 in just under two weeks. Much of February was spent eyeing outbreaks in other countries, from Italy to Iran. Everything in America would begin to change the second week of March. March 10th, Bishop Cynthia Fierro Harvey releases her first of dozens of statements related to emergencies in the year 2020. She called on all of us to be smart and proactive about gathering together. She continued by saying, I encourage all of us to be the body of Christ to the world, worship together sensibly and with good courage. Above all, lead with love. The next day, March 11th, matters in America would begin to change drastically. It begins in the morning with Dr. Anthony Fauci testifying before Congress. I'm trying to help the American people know where to appropriately set their gauge. I think you set the gauges that this is a really serious problem that we have to take seriously. His testimony would soon send shockwaves through the markets. That evening, President Donald Trump addresses the nation from the Oval Office. Today, the World Health Organization officially announced that this is a global pandemic. We have been in frequent contact with our allies, and we are marshalling the full power of the federal government and the private sector to protect the American people. Hours later that same night, an unprecedented move by the NBA as the league announces the entire season suspended. The next day, March 12th, Bishop Harvey releases an updated statement recommending that churches consider postponing any activity that brings together large groups of people. And by that Sunday, March 15th, pastors all across the Louisiana Conference, and for that matter, the entire world, had postponed in-person worship and jumped online to worship. From Facebook to YouTube, whether they used webcams or smartphones, worship continued, just in a very different way, a way that now seems so normal. Meanwhile, March 18th, 
The denomination postpones General Conference, which was to be held in May in Minneapolis. Jurisdictional conferences would also be postponed. Three days later, back at home, March 22nd, Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards would call for a stay-at-home order. Today I'm issuing a stay-at-home order for the entire state of Louisiana. Which will... With language such as shelter in place and asking us to limit movement outside of our own homes. The next day, March 23rd, with extreme pain and on the heels of the now stay-at-home order and with an eye toward Easter, Bishop Harvey releases another statement asking all of us to explore new and creative alternatives to Easter worship, reminding all of us that we as Methodists affirm efforts to strengthen the well-being of others. I, I never imagined um, being a pastor or being a bishop in a time of a pandemic, and we just get to add that um, to the to the list of things now that we've experienced. So, um, but grateful that we get to do this together uh, during this time. By now, the pandemic was here to stay. For pastors and churches, a very different sort of worship was here to stay, and there were adjustments to be made. Aside from the very real issue of learning to preach online to a camera lens and how to gather people online, there were two significant concerns. First, communion. And waiting off into the distance just four weeks away, Easter. For communion, pastors in the Louisiana Conference would help lead the way. Reverend Juan Huertes and Reverend Lane Cotton Wynn collaborating on three unique ways of offering communion. Some of us were suddenly practicing online communion. A first for many of us. April 5th, Holy Week begins. While worship was different, the Easter story remained the same. And the response all across the conference was exceptional. I've just been amazed, amazed at um, the growth that has occurred in just a few short weeks uh, in a lot of our churches. There are people that hadn't been doing anything on, on uh, using technology in worship, and all of a sudden they've become experts, and it's just great to see. And this week I was able to jump from uh, service to service, and as well as this morning, and uh, I experienced community. Union, there was foot washings, there were all of the things that make up this Holy Week, and uh, our pastors took us there. April 12th, Easter Sunday. Technology wasn't the only challenge in Monroe. Never expects to be running a live stream on Easter Sunday from their bathtub, but uh, that's what we found ourselves doing. Uh, we had a tornado come through here, Washtaw Parish. Uh, got parts of Monroe pretty good, starting to the north part of Parish, um, right about 11.30. Thankful that our pastors so far that we've heard from are safe and sound and that our people and our churches uh, seem to have weathered uh, this storm. Slowly, by May, stay-at-home orders would begin to ease. The state would soon announce what was known as Phase 1, a reopening of businesses, churches included. The conference would issue reopening guidelines. Suddenly, pastors and church leaders were researching occupancy rates for their sanctuaries and using calculators to determine just how many people could gather together for worship. It was different, but pastors all across Louisiana adjusted in remarkable ways. So as, as you prepare to gather as God's people, either in person or online, know that I continue to pray for you every day as I always do. And I leave you today with my mother's blessing that she always um, blessed me uh, each time that uh, we, uh, that I left home, any time that something important was happening in our lives. She would say, Dios les ayude, los bendiga. Dios les ayude, la bendiga. God bless you and keep you. That is my prayer for you this day as it is every day. So may God bless you and keep you be safe. 
May 25th, Minneapolis, Minnesota. A developing story out of Minneapolis where a man died during an arrest and the whole incident, at least much of it, was caught on video. Protesters here in D.C. have gathered near the White House throughout the day. George Floyd is killed and protests would take place all over the world. It's heartbreaking. Um, it is... Um, give me a minute. It's, it's outrageous in the worst sense of the word. Um, and yet what we, many of us know is this, this, this isn't new. The United Methodist Church would soon launch one of the largest campaigns in recent history. United Methodists stand against racism. At the same time, the Louisiana Conference would begin an educational and awareness campaign of its own. Five unique webinars in five weeks, all aimed at deepening the conversation about racism, understanding white privilege, how Christians are called to respond, and perhaps just as important, listening to one another and seeking solutions. There's no peace, no justice, no peace, no justice, no peace, no justice, no peace, no justice. No justice. One week later, June 1st, the start of hurricane season, a date that is always on calendars in Louisiana. Little did we know just how active the season would be. In fact, just four days into the season, Cristobal would form in the southern Gulf of Mexico and eventually strike the Louisiana coastline just east of Grand Isle with winds in excess of 50 miles an hour. Our state would be in the cone of uncertainty seven times in 2020, with Cristobal, Marco, Laura, Delta, and Zeta all making landfall. Hurricane Laura would be the largest, a devastating and destructive Category 4, the strongest ever to strike Louisiana, Laura made landfall on August 27th near Cameron. Churches all across the Lake Charles District were impacted. Everywhere you looked, you saw some of the most intense wind damage ever. Power would remain out for months. And suddenly, we were staring at a massive recovery effort in the midst of a pandemic. When I drove down Maplewood Drive, I was like, OMG, where's the fellowship hall? It was just, I mean, amazing to see the destruction. I just couldn't believe it. I mean, unbelievable. So it looks enormous, gigantic to us, but in the grand scheme of things, God is still God. Less than two months later, another hurricane would strike southwest Louisiana as Hurricane Delta took almost the exact same path as Hurricane Laura. The Category 2 storm made landfall near Cocodry. As we reached out for help, you responded in amazing ways and you continue to do so. Your prayers comforted, your hands rebuilt and will continue to rebuild, and your donations, they continue to restore hope in Southwest Louisiana. When we say the United Methodist Church is connected, it is so much more than a structural connection. For it is during times of disaster when we realize we are interconnected in ministry and in mission, able to accomplish far more than any one local church or person can do. As fall arrived, there was still no good news regarding the pandemic. In fact, rates of infection in America skyrocketed and we became the world's largest coronavirus hotspot in the world. 
masks became political, and all the while, we dealt with the single most divisive presidential election in history. November 21st, the conference would hold its first ever online annual conference. With over a thousand in attendance on a Saturday morning via Zoom. We conducted business, but we also celebrated. The week prior to our annual conference, we licensed, we commissioned, and we ordained with masks and social distancing. In the midst of everything, Men and women continue to raise their hand for a life in ministry. I present to you the newly ordained elders of the Louisiana Conference of the United Methodist Church. As this year comes to a close, we can easily reflect on all that went wrong in 2020. And there are certainly moments where lament is necessary and needed. But we must also remember three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. For it is our faith that grounded our response to the events of 2020 time and time and time again. While storms battered us, we trusted and doubled down on our faith. Our faith in God and one another is what led us to respond with the hands and feet of Christ. While the pain of racism burst forth yet again, it is hope that anchors our response hope that our Christian response is that we cannot be silent, that we must hold one another in love, a hope that taking action can bring about the change we so desperately need. With the fear and uncertainty of stay-at-home orders and death tolls too grim to even repeat, it is hope that replaced our panics with prayers, our worries with worship. And in the end, it's love. Love always sees us through to another day, another year. A love anchored in Jesus. A love that transcends everything, even 2020. If you would like to see a video of this look back at 2020, you can head to our Facebook page or to our YouTube page. We've included a link to both of those pages in the show notes of today's episode. The video is there for you to share on your social media networks. There is, of course, no guarantee that 2021 will be less intense than 2020, but it will be extremely tough for the new year to be more intense. At least that's what we're hoping for. For everyone here at the Louisiana Now podcast, our sponsor, the United Methodist Foundation of Louisiana, and our producer, Mary Burley, I am your host, Todd Rossnagel. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for supporting the Louisiana Now podcast this past year. And we wish all of you a very happy new year.